Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it is time to do my September reading roundup. <music> new to my channel or these videos this is a video series that I do kind of in replacement of an end of month formal wrap up and it's going to encompass a few things I'm going to quickly overview all of the books that I read I will also do a few bookish stats and then we are going to do my haul and unhaul for the month and then at the very end we are going to balance the books to make sure that my physical TBR is still going in the correct direction which is down now full transparency I am actually filming this on Sunday September 29th so there is still about two full days left in the month before it is done but I know that I'm currently reading my very final book of the month. I'm not going to be reading anything else this month and in addition if I didn't film it now I wouldn't be able to film it until next weekend and then this would go up way later than I wanted it to. So I felt like it was better to just go ahead and get this out of the way but that does mean I currently do not have a rating for the book that I am reading just because I haven't finished it yet. So with all that being said let's go ahead and just jump right in talking about all of the books that I read for the month of September and I will also try my best to include what books I read for which Slayer Fest prompts because Slayer Fest was in the month of September that is the readathon that I created based on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now I actually feel like I had a pretty solid reading month in the month of September despite how crazy everything has been for me in regard to like my personal and my work life. I feel like I had a lot of solid reads and I'm really excited to talk to you about them today. The very first book that I read in the month of September was Who is Ma Dixon by Alexandra Andrews. This was to satisfy the Slayer Fest prompt of reading a book by a debut author or a new to you author and Alexandra Andrews I believe is a debut author. I believe this is her debut and even if it's not I had never read anything from her prior to this. Unfortunately this was just a very mid read for me. It follows our main character Florence who is desperate to be a writer. She's been working in kind of like a low-level role in a publishing company for a while and after some morally questionable actions she is fired from this publishing company but luckily she is offered a very prestigious role as kind of a personal assistant to Maude Dixon. Maude Dixon is a very well-known writer. She had one book that was published but it was kind of like a worldwide sensation but nobody knows who she is because Maude Dixon is a pseudonym and so we're following following our main character as she actually meets the real Maude Dixon. She starts to get to know who she is and stuff and then they are going to Morocco kind of like on a research trip for the book that Maude Dixon is about to write and some things go wrong. Maude Dixon is presumed dead and Florence decides that she is going to take over Maude Dixon's life because literally nobody but kind of her agent knows who Maude Dixon is and so she's just going to go ahead and step into her shoes and become an already famous author instantaneously. And this was just okay. I really didn't buy a lot of the things that were happening especially the actions of Florence like it really didn't make sense to me that all of a sudden she's in a terrible accident in Morocco. She decides Ma Dixon is dead. She's just going to seamlessly go into Ma Dixon's role. I just didn't feel like that made any sense at all, especially because she didn't actually know what happened to Ma Dixon. She's in a completely foreign country and how on earth do you think that you're just going to like take somebody's place? You know what I mean? So it really didn't feel all that thought out to me. I was definitely more entertained by the end of the story than I was in the beginning of the story, but for the most part this was just okay and I gave it a three stars. And then next I actually read a book that wasn't original on my TBR but it came in from my library and that is Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. This is a book that I was reading for the Mission Impossible project that I'm undertaking here on my channel where I try to find my perfect romance or my next favorite romance book or romance author and this is a book that had been recommended to me numerous times so I put it on hold and it came in. Luckily it satisfied a lot of sidekick prompts so I was able to submit it for those. I'm not going to say too terribly much about this here just because it's going to be in the upcoming vlog where I read this story. Unfortunately I was not as impressed by this as as a lot of other people were or as I was thinking I was originally going to be but that is all I'm going to say about it. You will have to watch the vlog for more of my in-depth thoughts on this book. Next I read Crazy Stupid Romance by Alyssa K. Adams. This is the third book in the Bromance Book Club series. I read this for Slayer Fest prompt number two which was to read a book featuring like a subject event hobby that interests you and one of our main characters in here owns a cat cafe and that is like a dream come true for me so I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and pick this up and now I'm only one book away from finishing this cute contemporary romance series. I had a great time with this and I gave it a four stars. Then I read Someone's in the Attic by Andrea Mara. This was to satisfy the prompt of reading a book set in a location that you would like to visit someday and this is set in Ireland and that is definitely a huge bucket list location. In fact I hope to have that crossed off by this time next year. I am absolutely dying to go. This is by an author that I had never heard of before. I had never read from before but a lot of her books have pretty solid ratings and so I was really excited to go ahead and get into this and I am happy to say that I had a really great time with this. This follows our main character Julia and there's kind of this trend going around about 
about people seemingly sneaking out of attics and it's like this whole reality television thing. And one day Julia's daughter shows her a clip of somebody coming out of an attic that looks very familiar and that is because it's hers. They are trying to figure out how on earth this person is doing that. How on earth is this person getting clips of their house and it just becomes more sinister as it goes as we're following who actually did this and why. So like I said, I had a really great time with this. I enjoyed it more than I thought that I would and I gave it a 3.5 stars. And then I was so excited to be able to finally get to Apprentice to the Villain, which is the second book in the Assistant to the Villain series by Hannah Nicole Mayer. You all know how I felt about Assistant to the Villain. I have been absolutely raving about that book since I read it earlier this year. Luckily it bit in with a Slayer Fest prompt to read a book featuring an unlikely or a reluctant hero and I absolutely loved it. I don't know if I loved it quite as much as I loved Assistant to the Villain, but I was just so grateful to be back in this world with these characters. The banter and the sarcasm of course was on point. You're seeing things escalate a little bit between Evangeline and the villain and of course you get Kingsley that sassy little frog and you find out more about him and what his history is. So I absolutely just adore these characters and I loved being back with them. So this was absolutely a hit for me in September. Then the next prompt was to read a book that you think is overhyped or a book that you have been avoiding because of the hype and I originally had plans on reading The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman for this and unfortunately I got a few chapters in and I just realized it wasn't for me. It wasn't working out and so I had to kind of scramble to think of something else and when I was looking at currently very popular hyped books one that popped up was actually a very recent release and one that was recently featured on Book of the Month and that was Sleep Tight by J.H. Marker. Now I had absolutely no idea what to expect going into this because I had never heard of this author. I had never read from this author before but this is another one that I was pleasantly surprised by. In fact I would say that this is one of the best thrillers that I have read so far this year. There were definitely multiple components going into it and I just had a great time. So this follows our main character Tessa and she is actually a detective in Montana but before her and her family moved to Montana when she was a teenager they were actually from the Midwest. I think they were from either Kansas or Kentucky. I can't remember off the top of my head but basically during that time there was a serial killer named Father Silence who was kind of preying on the vulnerable members of society. He was disguising himself as a priest. He took many many lives and Tessa's father was actually the detective on that case and he ended up catching him and the guy went to prison and at the very start of the story he is finally being executed and of course whenever an execution comes about all of the media attention comes into play so Tessa and her father and their family are just trying to hunker down trying to stay out of the spotlight but then her father and her mother are killed and there is somebody going around calling himself the outcast and he is killing people associated with father silence and shortly thereafter Tessa finds out that her child has been abducted and so it is kind of up to her to figure out who the outcast is as somebody doing a copycat of the father silence killings and there are a lot of other layers to the story aside from just the outcast but you are also learning about a victim that actually survived father silence he is currently in a mental institution and he might be the only person that can help solve this case and overall I just thought that this was really well done the vibes in here were immaculate it was definitely creepy and sinister at a lot of points and I had a great time with this I highly recommend if you are looking for a solid thriller to give you those good spooky vibes during October this is certainly one to pick up then the next prompt was to read a book that featured children in some way and I kind of pushed this a little bit because I read Five Survive by Holly Jackson for this and they are definitely older teenagers and some of them were actually adults so that's why I say I'm pushing it a little bit and this is one that I was nervous going into just because I really enjoyed the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and I hadn't been hearing the best things about this even though the rating on Goodreads for this was pretty high and once again I'm grateful to say I had a wonderful time with this. My reading experience with this was top-notch. This follows a group of six who are going on spring break. They are in an RV, they are close to their destination but they kind of get lost. It's late at night, the GPS isn't working because the cell reception is down and they end up in this very rural road and their tire blows out and they get out to fix it and then they're on their way again and another tire blows and another and another and another and they soon realize that they are currently under fire from a sniper and they are being specifically targeted and the sniper ends up telling them that one of them has a secret and he is not going anywhere until that secret is revealed and so you're following these teens as they are trying to figure out what to do who has the secret who is hiding something how can they possibly survive this I thought that this was really well done I should not have been surprised that Holly Jackson is able to write a very solid, engaging, compulsively readable YA thriller. But I think she did a really great job. In fact, the only thing that I really had a complaint about is Oliver. He is an older brother of one of the teens that is in this RV and he's kind of there as like a chaperone. And so naturally when all of this stuff is going down, he thinks that he is the leader. He thinks that he is right. He thinks that everybody should be following his lead, but he's also very unstable and he's not really willing to accept questioning towards his ideas. So he becomes very angry and kind of violent and threatening if somebody is not listening to him. So this book did kind of get into a pattern of repetitiveness where he comes up with a bad idea everybody kind of goes along with it nobody's really willing to stand up to him and so I kind of felt that could be a little bit long and drawn out and naturally nobody could stand Oliver everybody kind of wanted him to get shot right so I think that was really my only complaint is that I was just really frustrated with Oliver and I was really frustrated with the rest of them for not standing up to Oliver but ultimately like I said I had a really great
great time with this and Holly Jackson really isn't afraid to go there with these young characters. She will kill them if she has to so she is not afraid to do that. So I'm so glad that I had a great time with this. I'm very much looking forward to her newest release, The Reappearance of Rachel Price, and now I'm going to be less nervous going into that one. All right, and then the next prompt was to read a book that featured a past and present timeline. And so for this, I ended up having to stretch it just a little bit because I read The Night We Lost Him by Laura Dave. And when I went into this, I thought that it was going to be a strict past and present timeline, but it really wasn't. It was a present timeline, and then you were getting snapshots of the past. And it was multiple years in the past, but it was all following one character and a developing relationship and so I kind of counted it for that. This is another one that I went in very nervous about because I had read Laura Dave's other release, the one that got really popular. I think it was like the last thing he told me and it was one that I had never been impressed by. This is another one that I enjoyed far more than I was expecting it to and I think that's an unpopular opinion. I think a lot of people are really not enjoying this because they're going into it with the wrong expectations. They're thinking it's like a thriller and let me tell you it is not a thriller. It is barely even a mystery. Overall I would say that this is more of a family drama with an underlying mystery as kind of a subplot. Basically, this follows our main character, Nora, and her father has recently died at his vacation home in California. Everybody's saying that he just slipped and fell off the cliffs to his death. But Nora's younger brother, somebody who she's not really close to, somebody who she's kind of estranged from, he approaches Nora and he says, I don't really think dad accidentally fell to his death. I think that something sinister happened. And so he kind of gets Nora involved in investigating what actually happened to their dad. So naturally, through the course of this investigation, they're finding a lot about their father that they might not otherwise have known, including a relationship with somebody that he was very close to that they did not know about prior to this. And I just found this incredibly compelling and engaging. Y'all know that I love a very good character driven story. And that's exactly what this was. I wanted to find out all of the secrets that Nora's father had been hiding. To me, this was just a really enjoyable reading experience. I thought it was really well written. And this has certainly made it so that I will read more from Laura Dave in the future. And I also enjoyed kind of like the twists that came out at the end that weren't super shocking or anything, but I didn't necessarily see them coming either. So overall, this was just a really solid book in my opinion and I gave it a four stars. All right and then the book that I was perhaps the most nervous to read I was most intimidated to go into was my five star prediction and that was Running Wild by K.E. Tucker. The first couple of books in the Simple Wild series are probably some of my favorite romances of all time and so naturally I was very nervous going into this because I was afraid it wasn't going to live up to my expectations and I'm so incredibly sorry to say that it absolutely did not live up to my expectation. Part of me does not even really feel like this was the same world even though we were seeing some of the characters from the first two books it just the vibes were different in my opinion and I had a lot of technical issues with this. So this follows Marie. Now Marie is a character that you see in the other books. She is a veterinarian in their small Alaska town and in those first couple of books you don't necessarily have positive feelings for her because she is best friends with Jonah who is the main love interest in those books and you can tell that Marie is absolutely in love with Jonah. She is pining for him and so when he starts getting with Kala and you're rooting for that relationship you don't love that Marie is in love with Jonah, right? You don't want anything to do with Marie and so this was her opportunity to kind of get her own love story and I really loved the idea of that. But unfortunately, there were several points in the story where I just did not care for Marie as a character. Now, I will say that in a lot of ways, I related to Marie. As a veterinarian, she is also a very strong animal advocate and animal crusader. You hear a lot about the Iditarod in this book because that is featured heavily in here and her ethical concerns regarding that. And I very much related to her motto of there is no line that can't be crossed when it comes to saving an animal. So in that way, I very much related to her passion and her advocacy for animals. But some of her behavior in here, even though part of me could understand it, I didn't really agree with this. This is the love story between her and Tyler Braden. Tyler Braden is new to their Alaska town and he is going to be competing in the Iditarod for the first time but he has won other races internationally. He's supposedly very very good and he and Marie get off on the wrong foot. They're kind of instantly hating each other right but then during the Iditarod when she is working checkpoints they kind of clear the air. It almost instantly goes from hating to Marie wanting to jump his bones. Now I will say that Tyler does give her mixed signal. She is interpreting these correctly and she thinks that it could potentially go somewhere but then all of a sudden Tyler kind of pulls the rug out from under her and says, you know what? I can't do this. I can't be in a relationship. I can't date. And so instantly Marie goes from warm to ice cold. She does not even want to be Tyler's friend. She's like, no, I don't need any more friends. I don't want to have anything to do with you, which part of me does understand because of all the time she wasted being in love with Jonah. But I hated the way that she treated Tyler in that regard. Like she just became instantly frigid and wanted nothing to do with him. Now, Tyler has definitely gone through something very traumatic in his past. I won't go into it because I don't want to risk spoilers, but it only happened two years ago. So you can kind of see why he might not be ready for a relationship but yet throughout the story he is very much kind of stringing Marie along because there are a couple of more instances throughout this where he is like wanting to pursue things with Marie and then he backtracks and this is very concerning to Marie because she is 38 so she is definitely on the older side in terms of wanting to have children. She desperately wants to have a child. She wants to be married and because he keeps giving her signals and then pulling back she's very frustrated and ultimately she's like you know what I can't do this and then of course you're watching the development of their relationship.
relationship. And also on that note, there was one thing that happened in here that really, really turned me off. They are currently in the middle of their second sexual encounter. They're finally giving in. They finally seem like they're going to progress somewhere. They both realize that they don't have a condom and Marie is not on any kind of birth control. And they're basically like, okay, well, whatever will happen will happen. Tyler is not yet willing to be in a serious relationship with Marie, but yet he's totally willing to father a baby with Marie. And I'm like, excuse me, are you absolutely serious? So there was just a big, huge roller coaster of things going back and forth. I do not know what Kay Tucker was thinking when she wrote this story, but I think she made some very questionable choices when she wrote this. And I'm very, very disappointed by that. Now, all that being said, I would say that my overall reading experience was not terrible. Like I flew through this story and I was engaged the whole time. It just, I don't know. I just could not stand the main love interest throughout part of this story. I currently have this as a three on Goodreads. I might raise it to a 3.5 just because like I said, my overall reading experience of this wasn't terrible. It just, there were so many, so many questionable decisions in this and I'm so disappointed. Also, I want to quickly mention that I finally finished Golden Sun. I had started this in July and because of all the craziness that's been going on the past couple of months, I barely touched this over the past several weeks. I would go over a week at a time without touching this and when I finally picked it up, I would only read a couple of pages. So this was a very long and drawn out reading experience. This is the second book in the Red Rising series and I will say that when I was able to actually sit down and read it, I was really enjoying it because this definitely got more heavily into the politics and it didn't involve the war games of the first book, which was one of my main problems with the first book. I will say that I don't really feel emotionally invested in these characters. I feel like this is written in a very dry emotionalist way, so I'm not necessarily connected to anything that is happening, but I am interested and the way that this second book ended really made me want to pick up the third one. So I think I'm going to go ahead and settle on a four stars, but I'm not really sure how I feel about it just because I wasn't able to get that cohesive reading experience because of everything that was happening. But I did finally finish and I'm so, so glad that I did because this was starting to become a chore with this just sitting and staring at me and waiting for me to read it. So finally got this done. And then the very last book that I fully completed, like I said, I'm still in the middle of one book. The last book that I fully completed is actually to satisfy prompt number 10 because I was waiting on prompt number nine to come in from the library and I knew it was going to be coming in soon. I just didn't know when. And so since it wasn't still ready and I knew what prompt number 10 was, I went ahead and satisfied it. And that was to go out and treat your shelf and then read that book immediately or read one of your newest acquisitions. And I had Mad Woman by Chelsea Beaker to read from the September book of the month box. And so I went ahead and read this. And this was another very pleasurable experience, but this is another one that I didn't have the quite expectations for going in. So this follows our main character, Clove. She is married. She is a mother of two and she is struggling. She is really struggling with motherhood. She has two young children. She is currently a stay at home mom and she is struggling with all that comes along with that. But also she's been hiding deep, deep secrets for many years from her husband. Her husband does not even know the real her and that Clove is not even re her real name. And so one day when she's going to the post office and her kids are having an absolute meltdown, she gets a letter that she's not expecting. And that letter is from her mother who is currently in prison in California. And so this is told in the present perspective as she's dealing with that letter coming in and all that it means and all that she's going through. But she's also telling her story from the past and why her mother ends up in prison. But essentially she had a very traumatic childhood. She had a very violent and abusive father and her mother really didn't help because her mother was an alcoholic, but her mother never protected her. Her mother always made excuses for her father, never left her father. So she was left in a very turbulent and unsafe household. One day her father ends up dead. And that's all I'm going to say. She ends up on the run. She changes her identity and she settles down with her husband and they have kids and all of that. And it's all kind of starting to unravel. Now this story makes it seem like you're following Clove as she's descending into madness. And that's not necessarily the case. She's just really struggling to deal with everything that is being thrown at her. And she's not sure what to do because she knows that her life is about to unravel when these secrets come out because her mother is contacting her for help to try to get out of prison. And so she knows that her carefully curated life is about to unravel. So you're just kind of following her and her neuroses and her trauma and her trying to deal with it. And I just ultimately found like this was a very interesting reading experience overall. And so I rated this a 3.5 just because I don't necessarily know how much this is going to stick with me. I didn't super emotionally connect to anything that was happening in this story, but I still had a really good time and I would absolutely be willing to read more from Chelsea Beaker in the future. And the very last book, the one that I'm currently reading is another one for that Mission Impossible vlog. And that is Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. Yes, I know that this is one that you might not expect me to ever have picked up because this is a young adult contemporary romance, but this is literally a book that I hear absolutely nothing but great things about. Almost everybody who has ever read this book has not only said that they loved it, but that they have been sobbing by the end of it. And so because of that, I wanted to go ahead and give it a shot. Now, again, I'm not going to say too terribly much about it here just because it will be in that vlog, but I will say it took me a while to get into it, but I am now absolutely hooked. I went from like 30% at the start of yesterday to almost finishing it by the end of the day, and I will certainly be finishing it today. I just didn't have time to finish it before filming this video. So 
that's why I knew that I was going to finish it. It was going to be the last thing I finished for September and I wanted to get this film. Now this is definitely a very long book. I think I'm reading what's called part one and it's over seven or eight hundred pages and so I'm over 70% of the way into this book and there's really been nothing going on with them except some casual interactions. So I just know that it's going to dive more deeply into it later down the road but I'm here for it. I'm invested. I'm really interested in finishing the book. So ultimately having a really great time with that and you'll get my full thoughts when that vlog comes out. All right now let's go ahead and quickly run into some bookish stats. Now like I said because I'm currently in the middle of binding 13 I'm not going to be able to include the page number or the actual rating of the book but I will incorporate everything else from this book. So in the month of September I read a total of 12 books. That is 3,873 pages without binding 13 included. Throughout the month I gave two three-star ratings, three 3.5 star ratings, and six four-star ratings again not including binding 13. All of the books that I read were novel format. They weren't graphic novels, mangas, novellas, or anything of that nature. 11 of the books were consumed purely via audio and then Golden Sun was a mixture so I immersively read that book. Out of the 12 books that I read 10 of them were geared for an adult audience and then two of them are geared towards an adult slash new adult audience. I will say that Binding 13 does deal with some very heavy topics. There is some very adult language going on in there so it doesn't necessarily read like young adult. In terms of where I acquired the audiobooks one of them was acquired from Spotify, five of them from Audible, three of them from Everand, and three of them were from my library. And then in terms of author status seven of them were actually authors that I had read from before and then five of them were new to me. So I'm still keeping up the trend of reading books mostly from authors that I've read from before while also still incorporating some new to me authors and I think a lot of that has to do with book of the month. And then in terms of genre I had four books that I classified as contemporary, one as fantasy, one as science fiction, three as mystery, and three as thriller. All right now it's time to get into the haul and the unhaul but first we have to determine how many books are currently on my physical TBR so we'll know whether or not my physical TBR is going up or down. Now at the end of last month's reading wrap-up I had 19 books on my physical TBR. Five of the books that I read were already physically on my TBR prior to the month of September starting bringing my physical TBR down to 14 books. Now let's quickly run through all the books that I hauled in the month of September. Honestly it wasn't too terribly much. The only books that I bought for myself in the month of September were the book of the month books and then I kindly received a gift from one of my friends and subscribers Jarrett. As a reminder these are the books that I hauled from book of the month. Mad Woman by Chelsea Beaker, Sleep Tight by J.H. Marquert, Someone in the Attic by Andrea Mara, and The Night We Lost Him by Laura Dave, all four of which I've read and so none of these will be added to my physical TBR. And then like I said I received a very kind and surprised gift from Jarrett. Thank you so much Jarrett for the kind gifts that you sent to me. I was absolutely not expecting them at all but she sent me Bittersweet by Serena Bowen. This is the first book in the True North series. If you've watched one of my recent TBR videos you will know that this series got a complete rebranding and so I think I've made the decision to replace all of the original covers with these ones because I had to purchase Heartland in this edition. I couldn't even purchase the other edition and so now I'm going to have a mixed set. So I think Jarrett kind of took pity on me and decided to send me the first book in the series so that I didn't have to recollect the whole thing. So thank you so much Jarrett but of course I've already read this so it's not going on my TBR. And then she also sent me The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley and I am so excited because I will actually be getting to this in October. So it is being added to my TBR for the moment but it will not stay on my TBR for long. Oh and then I completely forgot that I received the Owl Crate exclusive editions of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom and I cannot believe that because these books are stunning. So here we have Six of Crows. Look at that foiling y'all. Oh my gosh it is beautiful. There are the sprayed edges, the back. We have some more beautiful foiling on the front, the spine, and the back. And then here are the end pages. And then here's Crooked Kingdom. This time we've got a lot of gold foiling on there. There's the spine, the back, and those beautiful sprayed edges. Here is the front foiling. It says A Tourist's Guide to Ketter Dam, which I love. There's the spine. There's the back. And then here are the end pages. All right so if my math is correct only one of the books that I hauled for the month of September is actually being added to my TBR so that brings my physical TBR up to 15. However I do have a couple of books to unhaul. First I have The Forest of Vanishing Stars by Kristen Harmel. Now I really don't have anything against this book it's just I am not excited to read it. I have read a couple of Kristen Harmel's other historical fictions and they've been okay. There's been nothing egregiously wrong with them. They just haven't pulled me in like a lot of other historical fictions that I really love like Susan Meisner, like Kristen Hanna, like Diane Chamberlain. Those to me are all very compelling historical fiction authors. When I read their books I'm just completely absorbed and no matter how long they are I just kind of want the books to keep going and I just don't get the same feeling from Kristen Harmel. And so because of that and because I'm already pretty picky with which historical fictions I pick up just because it takes me the right mood to read historical fiction I just don't think I need to keep this on my TBR anymore because I'm not excited to read it and I don't want to force myself to read something that I'm not excited for. So I feel like I'm okay putting this one up on Pango. And then sadly I'm also going to be unhauling the Fairy Luda 
edition of Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Maniscalco. Now, if you'll remember, I originally had this on my TBR for Slayer Fest because I wanted to read it for the prompt of reading a beautiful book slash cover by, and then I ultimately replaced that with Long Live Evil by Sarah Reese Brennan, and I also did not read that because now instead I'm reading Binding 13. But I will say that by the time I was ready to read that prompt, I did try to read this. I did put it on audio. I did listen to a chapter or two, and I just realized I couldn't do it. I mentioned this before. I have read all of Carrie Maniscalco's other books. I've read the entire Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I've also read the Kingdom of the Wicked series. There is just something about her writing. I don't know if it's because it's historical fantasy, but it just does not work for me. I just never feel emotionally connected to her writing or fully invested in the stories that she's telling. And as soon as I started this book, I realized it was going to be the exact same thing and I just didn't have the patience for it. So as beautiful as this book is, as much as I wanted to keep this on my shelves, I just cannot do it. And I'm sure that there is somebody out there who would love to have this copy. So I'm going to unhaul it. All right. So since I'm unhauling two books, that should bring my physical TBR down to 13. And if you've watched my October TBR, you will know that I have several more books coming off of my physical TBR in the month of October. And I am so incredibly excited for it. I don't know how much more I'm going to be able to get off of my physical TBR for the year, but I'm so thankful that by the end of October, I will probably be below 10 books. And that is definitely better than I ever expected. So I'm pretty proud of myself for making such a huge dent in my physical TBR in 2024. And I don't plan on ever really letting it creep back up. I plan on staying pretty diligent with it. All right, everybody, finally, we are done. That is it. That is my reading roundup for the month of September. As always, please comment down below and let me know some of your best and worst books for the month of September. I would love to know if you participated in Slayer Fest, please let me know maybe what your favorite prompt was, or please let me know one of your favorite books that you read. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you're not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me an emoji corresponding to one of the Slayer Fest teams, which watcher, Slayer, Vampire, or Werewolf. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which you can always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.